My name is Vanina Morrison, and I'm a digital agriculture analyst at FAOREU and today's host. And our special guest today is Chatai Chebi. He is the project coordinator with FAO Turkey. Welcome, Chatai. Um, and Chatai, today we invited you to tell us how HEP Yerinden, which you might have seen a little bit of in the previous video, has acted as a revolutionary tool as an online marketplace for women's cooperatives in Turkey. As usual, we will have four questions for you to get started, and then we'll turn to the audience. So colleagues, you can start writing down your questions or comments in the chat, and raise your hand if you want to ask anything at the end. My co-host, Veronica Sharova, also a digital agricultural analyst here at Reu, will be helping me with the questions in the chat later. So. I'll go ahead and get started with the first question. I think it's something that everyone would like to know. What is the origin story of HEP Yarin then? What inspired the development of this e-marketplace? And can you tell us a little bit more about the project, specifically the process of establishing such an online platform? Uh, thank you, Vanina, and thank you for inviting me and having me here. Um, women play a critical role, role in rural development, particularly in cooperatives where the communities get together, uh, work together and live together. We are also aware of, uh, of the persisting inequalities between the men and women and how women suffer uh, from lack of fair compensation. And if we don't close the gender gap in agri-food systems, all of our efforts for sustainable systems and rural development will be in vain or incomplete. And Happier in Then is a step, perhaps the biggest one that we have taken to fill that gap so far. And it's a step within our cooperative support program that started in 2019 with a small project uh, that we implemented with the Minister of Agriculture and Forestry of Turkey. And then we continued with a larger EU funded project that has an aim of socio-economic integration of uh, Syrian refugees to the host communities. So um, using trainings plus equipment support, marketing and digital support led to the creation of an online marketplace operating nationwide. We encouraged the women-led women -led cooperatives that we have supported to get together, join their forces to become stronger, get recognized and create a joint identity that can represent the women of agriculture to the whole nation. Currently, we have 10 women-led cooperatives selling more than 40 different types of products in happierindan.coop, the e-marketplace, uh, that not only allow the cooperative to sell their products directly from its source to the consumer, uh, which by the way, uh, is, is, the, is the meaning of happier and then in, uh, in Turkish, it means always from the source. So the happier and then also brings those cooperatives uh, together and act as a gathering place. The project that I mentioned is still ongoing and expanding uh, with other cooperatives. Here I can uh, show you the website. Let me quickly share my screen. It, right as you can see uh this is your usual e-commerce site this is the main uh, and in entrance side of the of of, of the uh of the happier and then that cop we per uh, we deliberately choose the uh, extension name cop instead of, uh, of of the others because we wanted to emphasize this is a this is a platform uh operated and established by cooperatives so we have the uh, marketplace here where the consumers uh, buy buy their uh, buy the products directly from the uh, uh, from the member cooperatives so, so we have also other sections such as the about us where we talk about the stories of the cooperatives stories of the uh, of happier and then we have some uh, notes we have some media relations and this is the basket, and this is your uh, your account in in Appear and Plus Pro. Thank and you so much, Chachai, for showing us a bit about the platform. Um, and everyone can definitely visit it later. We will share some other links as well related to that. So. 
Um, I'm curious, you spoke to the fact that Hep Yearn then was originated to sort of fill a gap that existed for rural women farmers and these rural women led cooperatives. Could you elaborate a bit more on your approaches when working with these rural women farmers in Turkey? And do you have any lessons learned to share with us? Oh, yes, yes, we do. Uh, working with rural women uh, is sometimes difficult, but a very rewarding experience. Their energy, their positivity, uh, lift your spirit up and encourages you to continue your efforts, continue uh, working for them. And you can see how eager they are always to learn new things. And we have some approaches that we have taken, uh, that we have been taken and we are we, we continue to take. Um, uh, we have been implementing also farmer field schools under the same project. And many of these cooperative members have also attended uh, our farmer field school under the same uh, project. We believe farmer field schools, the FFS, is the best farmer extension modality to transfer knowledge and new technologies to the farmers. The FFS is inherently aligned with the cooperative spirit. Uh, you know, it is based on participatory learning where like-minded farmers get together and gain new, uh, new skills by doing, doing it themselves directly in their fields. It also shows farmers the benefits of working and living together. So FFS fit right in and complemented the cooperative trainings that we provided to the rural women. Uh, the women who completed the technical farmer field school trainings further received basic and advanced business development and entrepreneurship training, such as decision-making, organizational structures, uh, e-commerce, marketing, financial management, and strategic thinking. We also developed a website for FFS Action in Turkey where the users can access the training modules they can share their experience with the other uh, other members of the site, as well as they can receive real-time uh, weather and production information directly from their fields using the satellite imagery. At the end, all these individual cooperatives are equipped with this knowledge, uh, and they bring their unique experience and skills to the umbrella platform Happier and Then. They cooperate with other cooperatives to create this uh, unique brand. Thanks, Jetta. It's always very inspiring and great to hear that, you know, even though this is a woman's led initiative and these are women led cooperatives, we have, you know, men that are also working with these women and are very enthusiastic to work with them. Um, but you also mentioned that it has not always been very straightforward working on this marketplace. So I was wondering if you could share a bit more about the challenges you face while working with these approaches and maybe any success stories that you also have. Yes, yes, of course. As I said uh, earlier, although it is rewarding, but it is sometimes also difficult and challenging. Uh, and the, the main challenge that we face is, uh, is that, you know, the rural woman, uh, they are not used to taking uh, decisions and leading a business for all of their lives. Someone else, their husband and fathers in most cases, took the decisions and led the businesses and, and, and again, in most cases, led their families for them. So even though the woman did most of the work in the field and in the house, they did not have any experience on decision making or leading a business. They are willing, but it's a complete new territory for them. Uh, so it needed a lot of encouragement to overcome this. We wanted to ensure uh, that they are uh, that, that they become aware of their unique and strong capacities. We wanted to build confidence. Uh, so we use semi-structured training methods to in inspire coverage and self-confidence. We also show them role models, other successful women and, and, and rural women uh, most of the time as examples so that they can, uh, they, they can, they can, take, they can see, see these successful women uh, and get coveraged. Uh, for example, uh, one of the sex uh, role models that we have shown the other cooperatives uh, is actually a, actually a member of the Sepirindan platform, uh, head of head of the one of the cooperatives, uh, Miss Gursel Appa from uh, Trunjeller. I uh, I met her two years ago uh, in her uh, in her village. Uh, it's a 
small rural town in Western Anatolia, beautiful town, by the way, in uh, and then the village and her uh, cooperative is surrounded by these nice uh, tangerine orchards. It's always looking beautiful. Um, she, uh, uh, Gürselapa, when I met her first, she was just starting this uh, uh, this cooperative. She was trying to gather all the other women and people, the villager, uh, into the cooperative. She was trying to produce a unique uh, unique item that that they can sell, that they can market to the local area. So we have supported her and her cooperative. We provided them technical uh, trainings. We provided them some equipments that are necessary as a startup equipments, and then. She quickly uh, expanded their businesses. They uh, they now produce this ge geographically identified uh, uh, tangerines. They uh, they further process those tangerines to uh, to produce other uh, other products, and they sell those products not only to the local area but to the uh, to the to the whole country. And she actually become uh, a FAO food hero. And her story has actually also published on FAO's website, uh, her food hero story. Um, so uh, it, 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 was, it was a success story that we have shown our uh, other, uh, other cooperatives and other beneficiaries. Um, I must also talk about the technical challenges that we have faced here, I believe, because uh, not just working uh, with others, we also had some technical challenges, uh, IT related challenges, structural issues, as well as uh, some other issues related to the, uh, to the marketing. That's very interesting. Um, I encourage you all to read Gorsell's story. I have, and it's quite inspiring. And it's something that I think has inspired a lot of the other women as well. Uh, so we're also now getting to the end of the talk, actually, with my last question. And I realized that you mentioned that you've had some technical challenges as well. Could you tell us some more, I guess, more so of what are the technical aspects that it takes to set up and run an e-marketplace such as this? How are you working to resolve these technical challenges? And what are the future plans for the platform itself? Thank you, Anina. As I said, we had uh, faced some challenges, and we had, um, and we also have some plans, obviously, to to rem to overcome these challenges. Uh, we have now Ismet uh, Ismet Yalçın Bey with us here, and he's the main coordinator of our woman uh, woman led cooperative program. So I think he is in a much better position to answer that question. So if you allow us. Uh, I will ask Ismet Bey to respond to this question. Welcome, Ismet. Yes, we'd love to hear more from you. Hi, Ete. Thank you, Chatai and Vanina. Uh, actually, it 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 is. Uh, do Do you hear me? Good. The actually, uh, we set up a digital marketing platform uh, from payments to logistic because digital marketing platform uh, is difficult to maintain, and we agreed uh, we had an we had an agreement with this, uh, one of the famous payment systems also because the security is important. And when a customer wants to buy a product where chat I showed in the, our website, uh, he or she can uh, click on the button, buy button, then the payment system takes control uh, of the system and uh, like in other uh, commercial sites. Then uh, after acceptance of the payment procedure, an email goes to the our cooperatives and our cooperatives prepare their product and they call the logistic operator. We have also a agreement, a special agreement with the, the government of PTT Cargo uh, because they give special discounts to our uh, women-led cooperatives. And also women-led cooperatives, are uh, some of them are in rural areas in east part of Turkey. It is not easy to find a logistic operator there or may, it can be costly. Then... Uh, like any other uh, famous uh, digital platform, uh, they 
took their product and they uh, sent uh, to the customer. After customer receives their product, uh, our uh, cooperatives receive their uh, money in every two weeks. It's a uh, <clears throat> normal procedure. Uh, but I have to mention for the uh, sales because sales are not uh, desired in desired level since we established new this uh, platform. Uh, market is very competitive and uh, we need to work for marketing and it is a very costly operation. Uh, our plan is to uh, uh, extend all over the Turkey. For this reason, to improve our sales, we are in connection with the uh, major uh, e-commerce sites in Turkey, Amazon-like uh, platforms. And with the, these type of partnerships, uh, it will help our cooperatives to maintain their digital operation because it is, it is not easy to, uh, to use and maintain for women-led cooperatives since they are mostly living in the rural areas. And as Chatai mentioned, they know uh, production. They are, they are some maybe in uh, housewives in their homes, but also they are uh, trying to produce something and trying to sell it. For this reason, digital uh, part is uh, important. For this reason, uh, we want to establish this connection uh, between the uh, famous uh, digital commerce sites in Turkey. Then uh, it will uh, help uh, our sustainability. Uh, and uh, this is uh, important because uh, uh, companies, <clears throat> such uh, big companies are taking this for their social responsibility. Uh, for this reason, uh, yeah. uh, we yeah. are planning uh, to pass our selling part uh, uh, to the uh, to integrate actually uh, with the Pazarama or uh, any other famous uh, digital marketing platform. Uh, our plan also to maintain the Happy and Then uh, platform as a digital hub because it's a crucial digital system and it is not only for marketplace but also it is for training and any other uh, sources of uh, women cooperatives and for farmers such as traceability, quality of products, etc. We know oh, it is a difficult uh, thing, but this is the just beginning. But we have confidence to our women-led cooperatives to succeed. And we believe that uh, we will succeed all together. Thank you very much uh, for listening to me. If you ask any question, I'll try to ask. Thanks. Thank you so much, Ismet. And thank you also to Chatai for all of these great insights that you've shared. So I think now is the time for us to turn to the audience for questions. So colleagues, I see some of you already have your hands raised. Some might have. Chatai, did you want to say just, something? Just, just, just one course. thing to, yeah. to, to complement what Ismet Bey explained uh, about, about the marketing. Uh, we knew at the very beginning that it was the, the, the market is quite competitive and it would be difficult to compete, compete against the national e-commerce giants because they are giants, they, they hold the market strongly and they, they are not willing to, of course, let it go. So instead of competing against them, as Smith Bay explained, we are trying to integrate into them. So instead of competing, we are working working together with them. So oh, so so since this is a economical and the social movement, we have seen that they are really open to cooperate with uh, such a woman-led uh, initiative. Just wanted to add that. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yes, um, I think that's important to include that uh, as a result of social responsibility, they are aiming to integrate. Um, so I think we'll move on now to see if the audience had further questions. As I said, I've seen that there's some raised hands and some questions in the chat. So I'll just hand it over to Veronica to help me pick a few questions. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Vanina. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. So the questions that we have in the chat, 
is first of all a colleague from uh, a colleague named Lee is asking which provinces has the project been implemented. Mm -hmm. let so me... um, you want to cover? Okay, yes. go ahead. Please. Let, let sure, me sure. quickly respond. That. That's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, um, the project covers ten provinces of uh, of Turkey. Some of them in the western part, and but most of them are in the southeast uh, and and the few on the, uh, on the east. But namely. Uh, we have uh, Izmir, Manisa, Bursa from the west. We have one, the promised one from the east. And then we have Şanlıurfa, Gaziantep, Kahramanmaraş, Hatay, Kilis. And I always forget one of them. And Diyarbakır. Diyar, no, not Diyarbakır in the project. Oh, that's the Japanese project. Um, <laughs> and Adana. Thank you, Emre Bey. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so on a similar topic, um, questions from the chat from our colleague Daniela uh, is asking, is geographical distance an issue, for example, for matters such as storage or shipping, or does technology help tackling this divide too? Would you like to take this one or do you want to continue? Okay. Yes, uh, that's a very good question. It actually does help very um, help them very much to tackle this issue. However, it is still an issue, geographical distance, because this is a marketplace operating nationwide. So your customers, and usually the customers are uh, from the major, major provinces, such as Istanbul or Ankara or Izmir, and our cooperatives are located uh, somewhat uh, distant provinces uh, to these lo locations. However, the luckily the the shipment system in Turkey is quite developed. It's quite well developed, although sometimes very costly. F to overcome that, we have um, we have facilitated uh, some discussions with some some uh, some companies. For example, we have this semi-government owned uh, company called. PTT, uh, PTT Bank and PTT Shipping Services. So they made a very good deal with the uh, uh, with our uh, cooperatives through our facilitations, and 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 then now the shipment is much better organized and uh, and less expensive. Very interesting. Uh, so now let's turn to the audience. Uh, we have a couple of raised hands. I would like to first give uh, an opportunity to, um, apologies if I pronounce it wrongly, uh, Mevlut to ask his question and then Leone. Please unmute yourself. You hear me? Yes, now we do. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to uh, thanks, uh, thank you for the presentations and opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. One goes to Chatai Bay and the, the other one goes to probably Ismet Bay. The first question is relevant to uh, women's initiative uh, for this, uh, you know, experience. How their reactions during the training period because uh, the, the, the women's uh, attendance to training may have difficulties, uh, more difficulties than uh, men. So uh, during training uh, farmer, uh, you know, schools, field schools, uh, what was the reaction of the farmers and how they attended uh, the, all the procedural training, accountancy training, etc. And the second one goes to Ismet Bey. Ismet Bey, uh, how is it possible uh, to increase the number of uh, cooperatives uh, in the uh, you know happier and done platform is it possible because 10 cooperatives may be not enough for the for the time being in the future do you have any plan to increase the number of uh, co-op members thank you very much let me start um thank you Melut Bey and Merhaba Melut Bey is, uh, is, is from FIO Turkey by the way and uh, the very, very good questions. And that is something that we have been, I mean, involving women or increasing the woman involvement in our project activities. Uh, that is something that we have been prepared for even before the project starts. 
that we had plans for and that we had put a special attention, pay special attention to, to ensure women participation in our project activities. Uh, setting aside the Women Cooperative Support Program, we also had, as you said, and as I mentioned, we had farmer field schools, we have vocational trainings within the same project. And we had set uh, high targets, uh, gender targets for these activities. For vocational trainings, we targeted 50%, at least 50% women participation. And for farmer field schools, we uh, we we targeted at least thirty percent. That is a, that there's a reason uh, behind that, and I am, I will try to quickly, very quickly explain. For vocational trainings, we took some uh, extra measures. We uh, during the beneficiary selection, we have we have a good uh, set criteria for beneficiary intake, and we have given extra scoring to the women uh, candidates so that we could uh, intake women participants for the vocational trainings. For farmer field schools, that, that there is a cultural uh, difficulty there, in, uh, in the, especially in the rural area. Although women's, women are farmer, women do the far, farm job, uh, but majority, a large majority of the farmlands or the businesses are owned and registered by the name of the of the, of the fathers or, or, or of, the, of the husbands. So it was quite difficult to find women farmers who had formal registration in their in their names. In the western part of Turkey, it was easier, although still difficult. But in the eastern part, we have seen that. Uh, uh, challenge a lot and but working meticulously with our implementing partners mm -hmm. we have somehow and somewhat managed to ensure the participation of women in into the our uh, into our project uh, activities for women-led cooperative support program we deliberately went to the field look for uh, women-led initiatives and cooperatives that are in line with our selection criteria, and we selected them as project beneficiaries. And and I can, I, I mean, as I said earlier, they are women are, especially the rural women are, uh, so so eager to learn new things. And I believe they are, uh, they they can, they adopt these new technologies better than uh, men in most cases. I'm talking about rural men. Thank you. I hope that answers. Thank, thank you, Chatai. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mevlut Bey, for raising this question. Actually, uh, we uh, organized uh, happyerinden.com with the 10 uh, women-led cooperatives, but it is uh, open to other cooperatives also. We have uh, other uh, projects which uh, we, were, we are working uh, with the women uh, cooperatives. If they uh, sufficient enough to market their products, uh, then uh, we will integrate to the uh, appyerinden.co. Uh, means that it is an open platform for the uh, ready cooperatives. Thank you. Yeah, just just a just an add, a small add. What will be the criteria? Uh, main criteria for the cooperatives if you want to accept their applications. Sorry, Ismet Bey. Actually, well, uh, the uh, major uh, criteria is uh, the quality issues, uh, the marketing issues. They uh, they have to obey the marketing rules. Uh, then they can uh, they have to send their products uh, to customers, and they have to deal with the all these procedures uh, with the customers. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think we have missed two questions from uh, Daniel. Oh, no, we haven't yet come to that point. We have another hand in the audience. And then we can go to the to the questions in the chat, of course. So, uh, Neza, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I couldn't understand, but I couldn't open my video. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chatay Bey and Ismet Bey and all colleagues. 
Uh, I'm a gender specialist in FAO Turkey. Uh, I want to mention one important point is uh, women-led cooperatives beside the, you know, uh, digital platforms and, you know, women's economic empowerment. It's very important uh, for the communica- uh, community development because recently, you know, in Tur- Turkey in February, we uh, had a um, earthquake, and in during these earthquakes, the uh, FAO's uh, program, uh, cooperative program, uh, supporting you know at least six cooperatives in the earthquake region, and you know uh, these cooperatives also uh, emergently uh, supported their communities, you know. Uh, after the earthquakes. So uh, I think gender trans- transform- transformative approaches are uh, critical here. Uh, we should uh, not only recognize that women have strong, uh, women are the, you know, vulnerable group, always because we are, you know, uh, saying this, uh, and uh, we should not only, you know, specify that women are vulnerable, but uh, we should also recognize that women have strong capacity and knowledge uh, that we should need to invest it. That that is what we uh, approach, let's say we initiated uh, this uh, cooperative program. Thank you very much. Neşe Hanım, thank you, thank you very much. Neşe Hanım is, is FAO Türkiye's gender specialist who's been with us since the very beginning and supported all of their activities strongly. And thanks to to her efforts, we come to, uh, this far. Thank you, thank you, Neşe Hanım again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to everyone who asked questions. Oh, I'm glad that you could turn on your camera now. Um, so uh, now that the time has basically come to a close, I wanted to thank everyone for the questions that you asked and all of the insight shares. Um, and I wanted to thank everyone for joining today. So we will continue with any further questions in our Rayu Digital Teams channel. And you can also feel free to reach out to us with any other questions. That's our email.